Welcome back, everybody. I'm Shannon McQuitty from the Arthritis Patient Advisory Board at Arthritis Research Canada. And we have the privilege of speaking with Dr. Deanne Lakai during this session. Thank you so much for coming. Oh, it's my pleasure. Uh, Dr. Lakai is at the conference this year and she has been awarded the Distinguished Investigator Award on top of her many accomplishments <laughs> uh, and her busy schedule being a professor of rheumatology at UBC and the Associate Scientific Director at Arthritis Research Canada. So and I do know how busy you are, so thank you. We're all busy. <laughs> and looking forward to your keynote address that you're going to be giving during the CRA. So being the recipient of the Distinguished Investigator Award, can you share with us some of the projects that you've done just during this last year? Um, so I have a few different projects mm -hmm. that, I, that I'm involved in. I think, uh, if I think of sort of the highlights in the last year, probably one project that's very near and dear to my heart because I've been working on it for many years uh, has been the Making It Work program. So uh, this is a program that we've developed to help people with uh, inflammatory types of arthritis mm -hmm. remain at work. And it is a self-management type of program that's online. And it, uh, it is to help people lead healthy and productive lives at work and prevent work disability. So in the last year, we've been continuing the, we've done a, done a randomized control trial to see if this program is uh, effective at um, helping people remain productive at work and prevent work disability. And in the last year, we're now almost completing the follow-up and we're entering into uh, the data analysis phase and in, in, in this coming June will be two years where we're going to be able to start looking at some of our outcomes. So this is very exciting time. Very exciting. So this is, um, you know, one of the one of the projects that I, I think sort of stands out in the very last year. Very important one for patients. Very too. much. Yes. Uh, work, uh, work, as you know, mm -hmm. means a lot to, to people and it's, you know, not only uh, important financially, but it means a lot more to people in terms of their psychologically, mm -hmm, people's yeah. self identity, yes. their sense of contribution to society, their social network. It it means a lot to people, and we know that uh, work is an issue for people with arthritis. But we also know that given the right resources, that people mm -hmm. can be very successful at work. So it's a matter of supporting people, um, but often. There's not a lot out there for people to, to access, and so this program really uh, fills an important need in our in our healthcare system and in, in supporting people. And, and I think forward. educating patients and caregivers on mm -hmm. how to navigate through that system, and there's the medical system and working with their employers mm -hmm. so that they can continue to work and expose employers to the fact that they can still work. Yes. That they're not to be judged because they're yeah. not well necessarily. Or not. So it's a very fine line yes. between wanting to raise awareness so people are aware that it's an issue, but at mm -hmm. the same time not painting a negative picture because yes. really people with arthritis are so dedicated to their work that what they may lack in certain physical uh, capacities they make up in a lot of other ways mm -hmm. uh, and that determination and that resilience and that wanting to really give your best at your job makes way makes up for the the, the loss of some you know physical uh, function very and, uh, well said thank yeah, you so. And the other project that you wanted to mention? Uh, so the other, an, another area of, of research that I'm involved in is in uh, working in partnerships with uh, Indigenous communities mm -hmm. to develop um, arthritis services that are uh, uh, in, that are responsive to their needs and that are culturally competent and culturally safe. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are presenting here at the CRA meeting uh, two posters on a program that we've created in partnership with two communities, mm -hmm. uh, a community on uh, Vancouver Island and in Haida Gwaii, and it's the Arthritis Wellness Program. So it's a self-management program uh, that is, in, that is uh, uses approaches to health that are consistent with indigenous approaches to health, mm -hmm. so a holistic approach to health mm -hmm. and uh, 
and it uh, involves a family member because often for Indigenous people, the family is very important and is very involved mm -hmm. in managing uh, a chronic disease. So it, uh, they come to the groups with a family member and we're presenting uh, at the CRA meeting the results of our evaluation of this program and it's very encouraging. Uh, it was very well received and uh, uh, it, it does show even though this is only a proof of concept study only on a few people, mm -hmm. it's showing some improvement and some really important outcome. Uh, things like how empowered people are to do something about their health, or, and it, they were also very satisfied with the program. Do you think that um, those outcome measures that come from that, these projects that you're working on with the uh, Indigenous communities will be transferable to other cultural groups as mm. well? Interesting. Um, I, I mean, a lot of the concepts are similar mm. no matter which cultural well, having group you're a family working member with. involved yeah. summoning you know a su your support system and yeah. how important that is and yeah you're right i mean a lot of this is not unique to indigenous people no. that uh, you know are using a holistic approach to health is what a lot of our other patients also want mm -hmm. and certainly i find myself that what i've learned developing this program has actually influenced how i approach other patients that are not indigenous mm -hmm. patients but I think there's a real need in the, these specific communities because mm -hmm. yes. of um, the historical uh, context and the cultural context to uh, develop some services that are really uniquely developed specifically f for uh, their community and mm -hmm. um, that is really ingrained in, in their approaches to health. But but you're right, there's a lot of, a lot of common threads. I think so, yeah. And, and certainly now we're thinking about, we're at the stage of taking this program and adapting it for other communities. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's certain similarities, but different, you know, different uh, indigenous groups are different and mm -hmm. every program needs to be slightly adapted before it's implemented right. in another community. I've had the privilege of working on some projects with you, um, and which has been invaluable to me. Um, how do you, I know that you've worked from very early on in your career with patients in your research. Um, what do you think is the most important thing about uh, the term patient-centered in your hmm. work? That's a good question. <laughs> So, you know, it, I think it depends on which aspect of my work. So uh, there's the patient-centered in the research and there's mm -hmm. the patient-centered in the care we give. So right. which did you want? Did you want both? Or which I would love both. About? <laughs> yeah, I asked you that. I thought, well, oh, what are you going to answer? What you, how about, let's go with your work initially. Because work as in care. Yeah, okay. is in, is okay. in care, care. So, with patients yeah. because that seems to be... Um, the changing tide. Yes, I agree. And where patients are learning to communicate with their yeah. physicians as well as yeah. physicians are learning to accept that communication. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I think patient-centered right now is kind of a trendy term. Mm -hmm. And it, we hear it a lot mm -hmm. and we use it a lot. And mm -hmm. I think it's an important question. What does it really mean? And mm -hmm. what does it mean for me? So what, what it means for me is, um, is letting the patient be in the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. So I think that as physicians, we're used to, uh, you know, we're used to driving things. Mm -hmm. And now it's learning to be on the passenger seat and letting the patient drive the, uh, the process. And letting, the, so, I mean, I'm very comfortable with that because mm -hmm. I think that I like the concept of empowering a patient mm -hmm. that, so that they are the ones who are, are um, making the decisions and I'm there to assist them in making the decision as mm -hmm. opposed to I'm making the decisions for you and you're helping me make the best decisions for you. I like To me being patient-centered is flipping it the other way mm -hmm. and you're the one making the decision and I'm assisting you making the decisions. Like a co-pilot. Um, exactly, I've become the co-pilot and you're the pilot. So that to <laughs> me is the definition of, of patient-centered. And it means a lot of, and it doesn't, you know, it, it, it doesn't, there are certain patients who are not comfortable with that. So mm -hmm. we also have to be careful yes. not to be putting responsibilities on people's shoulders that they're not ready for. Mm -hmm. So it is really important if we want people to be really making informed decisions that we support them well and we give them the information that they need and, and that sort of, uh, that they feel, so I see it as like I'm on your team mm -hmm. and I'm there to be there for you and uh, to help you um, 
manage your mm -hmm. disease, but it's your disease and ultimately it's all your decision. So would you foresee um, better outcomes and adherence with this approach? Well, I think so, because I think if it's your, if you're completely part of the decision, mm -hmm. well, I think first of all, we'll make better decisions. We'll mm -hmm. make decisions that are better suited for you, right. because you will have made them, so they'll be better suited. No and then I think you're the one making <laughs> Well, and you know, we don't still always follow our own mm -hmm. decisions, <laughs> but I think it's a little bit more mm -hmm. likely. But I think there are also better decisions, yes. and, and and I think if you have your if there's the better buy-in of the patient, then it's more likely that those things will happen. Yes, and I think it's setting the tone as well for the rest of their life. It's it's a disease that you're going to have to manage throughout the years. Yeah, it sets a tone for yeah. yes, a better better planning for the yeah. future and and survival rates, etc. Yeah, I agree. Well, thank you so much. Um, was there anything that you wanted to add about the theme of the CRA, the Building Bridges? I think it ties in really well with your your work with the Indigenous communities. What do you... Um, <laughs> the, I hadn't... The sort Building of, Bridges? The Building theme? Bridges. I, I, I think hmm. it's culturally... It's yeah, I agree, it definitely. Yeah, yeah, I think it definitely is very applicable to the uh, Indigenous uh, communities. I think it's applicable to um, building bridges with patients as well. I mm -hmm. think there's a, a lot of a, a lot of times where um, it is too separate, you know. I mm -hmm. think, and it's building bridges in research among, within our community. Mm -hmm. So we're not doing things in isolation, and we're all working together because together we are have much more. Um, much more strength and much more power to achieve things. Mm -hmm. So I see there's so many different bridges to be built and the more bridges we have, the better outcomes we have. Well, I think you set a great example oh, for doing you. that and for the um, future researchers and caregivers that are going to be, that are learning and you're mentoring them and it just sets such a great tone for wonderful things to happen in the future. Well, so thank you. <laughs> Is there any questions from the audience? Yes, I'd like to know, I've got a question here from one of our viewers about um, arthritis in Indigenous populations. Is it worse? Is there more? Um, so there's definitely more. Uh, there's definitely more. Uh, we know that indigenous uh, uh, populations have an increased risk of a number of our types of arthritis, like pretty much all of our types of arthritis. So definitely rheumatoid arthritis, but uh, certain uh, populations also have increased risk of ankylosing spondylitis. There's also more osteoarthritis. Uh, often also patients will have more severe disease. Whether that is something that is intrinsic to the disease itself or whether it's related to what we call the social determinants of health and you know whether it is because there's more barriers to getting the care that is needed whether it's uh, you know some other uh, social circumstances of uh, uh, that make it difficult for people to access what they need uh, or whether it's that actually it's the disease itself that is more severe, I think is still uh, unclear at this point. But definitely there's very good data showing that uh, the diseases are more frequent, the disease is more severe, there's more care gaps, people not getting the care they need, and, and worse outcomes, unfortunately. But we're recognizing it, and recognition is the, and awareness is the first step towards change. So hopefully uh, we can change these outcomes. And I just came out of a workshop this morning on uh, in, uh, on indigenous health and a lot of initiatives to improve and educate uh, the physicians within the rheumatology community so that we can provide care that is more uh, culturally competent, culturally safe, and so that we can break down some of those barriers and we can provide care uh, that resonates. Uh, with our patients and build bridges. <laughs> right? Well, thanks again, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing you throughout the rest of the conference. Thank you.